Hey everyone, my name is Sandu and in this video I'm gonna tell you how not to make an indie game. They say learn from your mistakes and if that's the case then trust me I have a ton of learning material. Today I want to tell you about one very ambitious project I was working on but sadly I had to abandon it later on and I want to tell you about those factors that brought to it being cancelled. I will go through the main mistakes and problems I have encountered on my way and watch this video till the end and hopefully you will not repeat them in the future. It all started a little bit more than a year ago, I still didn't have a YouTube channel, but I had two released projects. First one was Cut, a game you might have heard of. The main goal in that game is to cut the log and hit the perfect spot. Perfect spot. <laughs> yeah, I know. The second game is called Be a Miner, and even though it's a little bit more complex than Cut, it still is quite a small game and the mechanics are relatively easy to implement. Both games gave me a lot of experience and the dumb as I was, I thought that I'm ready to start something bigger. You might remember in one of my previous videos I told you that uh, for Cut I hired a freelance artist to make me the graphics because, well, I can't draw. And I really like this artist and we found a common language from the very beginning. It was very easy to work with him and yeah, overall it was very nice. Nice. They're nice. So for this project I decided to contact him again and offer him to work as partners. He would be responsible for all the artsy stuff such as assets, particle effects and so on, while I'll be able to focus all my strength and power in programming and making some nice mechanics. Sounds like a solid plan, right? So we started immediately working and the progress was moving quite fast. Everything in the project was very structured, I even had a Trello page where I would write every update and would keep track of any small change in the project so I don't have to keep it all in my head and as I said everything was moving pretty fast. I was still fueled by the motivation and the enthusiasm of the project so I was working almost every day almost the whole day. First enemy that I've created was a snowman which is basically a blob and that's a mandatory enemy for any indie game. I made some sketches and sent them to the artist and he immediately sent me some awesome drawings of different snowmans and we settled with this one. And as you can notice from his hat, we had the idea of making a lot of different easter eggs and hidden jokes all over the place. I just really like it when games add a lot of useless but still funny and interesting stuff all over the place. I even came up with a whole plot for the game, which I think could have ended quite interesting. Our story would start in Antarctica with a group of penguins. Due to global warming, their house was melting and they were forced to look for a new place that they can call home. They've heard that at the other end of the globe there is a similar place, an icy paradise where penguins could thrive once again. So they started building a sleigh on which they would go to the North Pole, and that's how their journey begins. Each season would represent a different biome, so the first season is South Pole, second season are Jungle, then Desert, Europe and finally the North Pole. Once they arrive they will discover a scary mystery. Turns out Santa is the bad guy. In order to scale up his gift production he has built a huge factory which is polluting the air. That also is the reason for the global warming in the first place, at least in this universe. And Evil Santa will be the very last boss in the game. I think this plot actually had some potential. Let me know in the comments below what do you think about it. And let's get back to the video. While working on one of the mechanics, I would think of a different idea and I would be like, oh yeah, th that definitely needs to be in the game, so I would write it down. An enemy that spawns shields. Yeah, okay, good. An enemy that creates illusions of himself. Oh, that's even better. Voice mechanic for shooting. Three different weapons, each one with unique abilities and strength. Inventory system. A shop where you can buy different upgrades and consumables like healing cells and homing missiles. A penguin team system where there are penguins of different tiers, each one with unique abilities and skills. Crafting an incubation system for those penguins. Unique boss levels with custom minigames. Mobile and PC controls. A whole RPG system where you can improve any kind of stat like crit chance, crit damage, attack speed, attack damage, penetration, range, lots of stuff. So yeah, what could go wrong, right? The game was moving so fast, the progress was moving so fast, there, are, there were so many mechanics being implemented one after the other and it actually started looking like a nice project. I was so hyped about the whole thing that I even started the YouTube channel just to gather some audience with whom I can share all this progress. The project was delayed for too long and for too many times so I started losing my motivation and I started forgetting what's the state of the project, which 
which mechanics and in what ways they are working, how everything is interconnected, where did I stop and so on. So one day I decided it's time to move on, so the project was cancelled. That's actually when I started working on the project that you all might know called AI Learns to Survive. That was my very first machine learning project, so maybe not that bad of an outcome, right? But here is the most important thing, what I've learned for that. And here are four main ideas that you have to keep in mind when started working on a project. First one is plan the key mechanics of the game from the very beginning. I know you might have heard that a lot, but that's really important. I'm not saying plan the whole game because I know how impossible that is, especially for an indie developer, but at least have a general idea of how your main and core mechanics will be working together. So you don't end up with intertwined spaghetti code that is a mess and you just hate coming back to. And even if you have to come back after, let's say, a month break, you don't get lost in it, because that's the case with most of my projects. And that kind of leads us to the second point. Don't take long breaks and don't work on other projects, at least if those are big projects. The reason for that is because when you have an idea, you're all hyped and motivated about getting it done, about making progress, seeing it growing. But if you make a longer break, let's say a month, two months and so on, you will lose that spark, you will lose this flame and the motivation and you will feel less and less inclined to coming back and continue working on that project. And exactly the same thing will happen if you start working on a different larger project. Because if you have to focus all your thoughts on a completely different project, you will start losing all the motivation and power of will to come back to the old one. The third point that I understood is that every member in the team has to be equally invested and motivated in the project. In the case where one is more motivated than the other, it will always result in the same thing. The person that is less motivated will just always slow down the project and the person that is most motivated won't be able to work on its full potential. That's why it's very, very, very important to make sure that your teammate is actually as motivated and interested in finishing this project as you are. For the fourth and last advice, there is something quite similar to what you might have heard from lots of different indie developers, and that is set realistic goals and try to build on top of them rather than just having a huge idea from the get-go. But don't get me wrong on this one, I'm not saying you shouldn't aspire to make a big game, you definitely should, because I mean, that's the dream of all of the indie developers, right? But what I'm saying is try to focus on those core mechanics first, and when you get those ready, that's when you start adding other smaller mechanics. And that's how your game will grow. Take as an example the game Rust. It started as a very basic game and continuously every month they were keeping updating it and adding new stuff and it's a huge game right now. So yeah, just start something small and then build on top of that instead of just starting huge from the get-go. Those are the four main ideas you should always keep in mind when you're starting a new project and I'm pretty sure they will come in quite handy. Alright, before finishing this video, I know that I said it will be about Gregs and Chad, but here is the thing. I'm currently finishing my university year and I'm working on my thesis project, which happens to be another machine learning project. So currently, all the day I'm training that project, so I can't really spare any computational power on Gregs and Chad for now. But don't worry, I'm still working on them and this project will come soon. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!